Good morning. It's Marianne from the New York City Organization of Public Service Retirees. This message is for Henry Garrido, Executive Director of DC 37, of which I am a retiree. Henry wrote an op-ed in the Daily News today, and this is a yet another scare tactic, intimidation in its ugliest form on the eve of a hearing to tell city council that you don't have the courage to do your job. Actually, the courage that's required is to protect the people that need protecting from the people that do something like this. We never thought we would have to come out and stand out against our own unions. And not all of the unions are in this position. But the ones that are, are the two largest unions in the city, and there's a reason. Because we have been telling you for months, everybody else other than Henry, who doesn't listen, or Michael, that the MLC is run by two primary unions. There's over 100 in them, but no one will let us know which those unions are. And because of the weighted voting structure, two unions the M in the MLC, two unions in the MLC, DC 37 and the UFT, have a controlling vote. They need a two-thirds motion to pass, a uh, two-thirds two vote to pass a motion. And they basically have that with those two unions. So he starts off this, that the city council has to ex exercise their leadership to amend the administrative code. The consequences of not having the courage to do the right thing will be devastating. Active workers and retirees will either lose their choice in health care plans or be forced to pay annual premiums for themselves and their families. Really, Henry? The courage is that I had to organize an organization, bring retirees together. We organized retirees using practices and tactics that you taught us. But typically we would fight management, not our own unions. Many of us are sick. I am not always well. And yet I had to relentlessly with my team keep pounding away at the propaganda and the lies that you guys spew. And this has taken a toll on all retirees. You negotiated an agreement in 2014 to allow the teachers to take $1 billion out of the health insurance stabilization fund. A fund that primarily benefits you, not someone on Medicare. And you're leaving out that fact. And you said to me one day in a meeting several months ago, are you looking to pit against people against each other? No, sir. That's exactly what you are doing. Because the one thing you want is to be able to control what plan we get. 12-126 was legislated by the city council to protect us all equally, a benefit that you are looking to strip away. And by doing so, to peg a plan with a value of $7.50, forever promising premium to retirees that don't go into the plan option you choose for me. And yet you're refusing to realize what that plan can actually do to someone because you want to insist that it's perfect. And then by putting out your three-page comparison sheet for the Aetna plan, you're comparing a Medicare Advantage plan to a Medigap plan. The Medicare Advantage plan is a 100% privatized Medicare, and you're comparing it to senior care, which is a plan that today pays less than 20% of our health care bills. So of course you wanted to make it look inferior. That's exactly what you did. And that's like, I don't know, comparing a Mustang to a Pinto. Are they both cars? Yes, but they're not the same. So you continue on with this propaganda that says a constitution of, the, of New York State, I'm assuming that you're referring to the state constitution, guarantees a pension for state workers, but unfortunately does not guarantee health insurance. It's up to the collective bargaining process to secure this benefit, which the MLC has done successfully in the last 40 years. That's because you haven't touched the administrative code, and that is because we had the administrative code. Remember, the state constitution provision that you refer to was legislated in uh, 1938. Our plans started in 1941 and were successfully realized in 1947. That's why that wasn't there. We never needed a state constitution for health because we had statute that came in 1967 that protected us all equally, something you're looking to destroy today. Um, you also continue that, you, that through your tripartite health committee that you founded in 2014, that over $3.4 billion were saved to date. Well, then you did that again in 2018, you refer to, 
But if your savings were so wonderful, Henry, why were you having financial troubles in 2021? That means that what you did really wasn't that successful, which is what the IBO and the controller has been saying, and we have, that your savings were a paper savings that was just some ploy between you and OLR and OMB because the whole thing was a ruse. You want to say that it's a savings because an insurance company said that they projected an insurance rate to be premium to be 9% higher than the year before. But when they only came in at 2%, you're taking that that difference between 2 and 9 is a savings. That's not real. That's a paper savings. And that's game playing. You further say that it increases in drug prices and astronomical bills associated with COVID-19. So now you're trying to tell me that this fund, the stabilization fund, is in poor repair because of high costs and the drug program. Like PICA, you need to, at this point to start taking PICA out of the stabilization fund. Use the stabilization fund for what it was used for. And that didn't mean use it for a billion dollars for teacher raises or anybody else's raises for that matter. These are things that you're not telling the truth about. You misused a fund that was that basically serves an active worker and some non-Medicare retirees, not a Medicare retiree, your most vulnerable population. You did this. You, one of the controlling voters of the MLC. You said that the retirees' lawsuit against the Medicare Advantage plan resulted in a decision rendered by Manhattan Supreme Court Justice Lyle Frank that the city is obligated is not obligated to give retirees an option of plans. Actually, the judge didn't say that. That question wasn't before him. He did say this is not to say that the city has to give an option, but that if it does, which that's always been the way it was. 12-126 didn't require that you have an option of plans. You negotiated that. Robert Lynn in like 1986 put in like 11 plans in one year. And there's a reason. Because of need, because of competition. The more health plans you have, the higher the service, more competition, the lower the prices. But you've allowed Emblem Health to primarily monopolize the system. Of course you have no competition, and what you do have isn't healthy. You allowed that because you, Henry, have people within the union that are on Emblem's board. It's such an incestuous relationship. If one insurer is supposed to set the benchmark, how does its sister company know what the rates are? And because you're on the board, are you not telling the other insurers? You also don't want the city council to know that you've been violating the law for years. If the city was required to pay up to the HIP HMO for all retirees, that means that the HIP HMO, at least today, is about $918. You've been charging retirees premiums for years. We have been subsidizing your stabilization fund, and you don't want anyone to know that. That lawsuit is coming next. You cannot sell us off like cattle to fund your piggy bank. And this is what we've been trying to tell you, but you don't want to listen. The retirees are not going to be used. We know what you did, and the city council will know. And everyone will know. And scaring them with stuff like this to say, the judge said we had to do it. Oh, and then the arbitrator said you had to do it. The arbitrator. His documentation. He might be an an arbitrator by trade. He's not an arbitrator in this situation. There was no arbitration and there is no dispute between the parties. The parties are the MLC and the city. You both agree to screw us. There's no problem there with the both of you. There's no dispute. You dispute with the retirees and the court. You also said that in the October 27th appellate hearing, the justices justices asked the attorney, well, why not eliminate all plans and only have one plan? Did you not remember what my attorney said? The retirees attorney said, sorry, your honor, no disrespect, but that question is not before the court. And there's a reason. Because that wasn't before the court to answer. Because according to the 1992 MLC agreement, the city must negotiate all aspects of health care with the MLC. Who's you? You can't, you don't have to worry about the city stripping all plans. And sure enough, an arbitrator can't do it because he's violating their own rules. And an arbitrator can't tell a legislative body to change a law to do what you want. Man, what happened to you? 
And why would you scare a legislative body that an arbitrator is telling them to change a law? To do your dirty work. You're a labor leader. You're supposed to labor, rally around labor, and collectively bargain. Do your job, man. And stop trying to steal from senior citizens and the disabled to fund your benefits. Michael Mogru, I have this on a video that I put on YouTube. It's a 55-second video. He said, the city said, if you take away, give us back that 20% plan, we'll give that money to you for your welfare funds. And why would the city want to do that, he says? So that they know what their expenses are. Who wouldn't want to do that? Okay, so let's sell off grandma and grandpa that gave their lives to the city for 20, 30, 40 years so that Henry and Michael can have health care benefits when they make a way ton more money than the rest of us do. You've lost sight of what's important, and that's people. You use your, your membership of low income and people of color and people who make under $35,000 or under $12,000 pensions. That's us. To say, you have to do this. To protect these people. Sure, Henry, let's totally destroy the village just so that we could save it. I don't know what happened to you. And I think if Lillian could speak out or Victor, they would pretty much be disgusted and disappointed at what you've accomplished. You're selling out the very people that need you to be lobbying for them and blaming us for creating chaos. You put us here and you're not listening how Medicare Advantage will negatively impact people. And you've lied to your membership to attack us. We were you. One day, you will be us. And then you will realize, if you push this through, the grave mistake that you made. But see, people like you and Michael will probably walk away not just with a city pension, but with a union pension. And you can care less because you could afford the $200 starting premium a month. The rest of us can't. And you'll be living somewhere in a mansion in Puerto Rico or, or Dominican Republic and not even thinking about what you did to the rest of us. You said the retirees group is doing a great job of scaring people into changing the code. No, sir. We've been educating people with facts. Health and Human Services off the Inspector General reports, the Government Accountability reports, the IBO reports, the Comptroller reports, and all of these professional whistleblowers from insurance industry that say all the horrors of Medicare Advantage. You've given us nothing. You said that the fund pays for the city and retiree health care has been depleted. That's a stabilization fund you misused. That you allowed the MLC to convey $1 billion back to the city in 2014 to offset teacher raises. And all of, if all of your savings agreements were successful, you wouldn't be crying poverty. See, the fact is that you're not telling the city council is that the stabilization fund has had problems in 03, 06, 09, 2011, 2014, and now. All you keep doing is plugging a hole that keeps springing back open every few years. Don't sell me off for your bad arrangements. Put the stabilization fund back on its feet. Pull the crap out of it that doesn't belong into it. Fix the problem the way it's supposed to. Don't sell off your population because if you open this door now, you invoke the state constitution, just like we tell our members, do not open the state constitution because you risk losing your, your protection of your pension. You do this, what's next? Robert Lynn, Renee Campion, Claire Levitt will come after Medicare B will come after spousal benefits. You don't touch a retiree and set that precedent. You say that, uh, that these efforts are causing the, uh, t these bills to mount to $50 million a month. There is no $50 million bill a month. The stabilization fund, um, I must have left that inside. There's about a billion dollars in that fund. There would have been two if you hadn't given the money away. There'd be more money if you make some changes. But it's not $50, 50, 50 million dollars a month. Your $50 million a month is the 600 million savings that you're trying to make for the year, which doesn't need to be included because in the, in the 2018 agreement, according to the letter by the city, that, that, um, that the savings agreement was met. 
The 2021 letter that OLR wrote to the mayor said your savings goals were met, but that they chose to implement Medicare Advantage to be able to fund the stabilization fund, which you guys have been misusing. It doesn't really benefit a Medicare retiree, only if you have a union and you have a welfare fund. Otherwise, it subsidizes you. Right now, you're trying to sell us off like cattle for money to, fund a, to finance a fund. That doesn't really help me. The Scheinman report is just a report. It's not, it's not a binding document. It was time barred from June of 2020 is when he had to effect any change. He's only allowed to mitigate issues between paragraphs one to four. Medicare Advantage came up in paragraphs five and wasn't part of the savings agreement. Don't lie. You know that as well as I do. Michael Mulgrew told his teachers, it's not binding. We all heard it. Randy Weingarten said it's not binding. We heard that too. You might want to get on that bus. And then you said amending the administrative code will allow you to close the gap that you caused and do what the courts effectively took away, provide options for those that want one. No, because the options that you want to impose on us are options that we can't afford. It provides you with the option to choose what health plan I will have till I'm dead with no further say. It allows you to take away my choice of care because right now retirees have 14 choices and actives have 11. And the city in 1967, yesterday, today and tomorrow will have choice because the MLC is required to negotiate all aspects of health care with the city according to the 1992 MLC agreement. So we'll still have choice as long as you don't negotiate it away. The power is yours, Henry. Do you know how to use it? I hope you do, because it's time to come back full circle. Realize your mistake. Recognize that you were lied to by OLR and OMB. Don't attack us, and don't try to force us into your dirty plan. And sure as hell, do not try to convince the city council to do your dirty work, or you're going to strip all plans. Now, it's Sunday morning, and it's 9 o'clock. I have to finish writing my testimony for tomorrow. I look forward to seeing you, Henry. Have a blessed day.